hi happy saturday and welcome to my live i'm just gonna sit here for just a minute there we go it did that fancy little beep thing that it does and how are you doing today have you watched any of these this is like day five of my 21 day creatively fit coaching certification live video challenge that's a mouthful <laughs> it's good i'm having fun and it's also getting me out of my comfort zone because it's really easy to say yeah i'll just do the videos tomorrow but here i am today on a saturday and i'm not going to keep you guys long today i just wanted to share um I shared with you that I thought I couldn't paint for most of my life. My grandmother was a great artist and um, there's been a lot of like artistic people in the family. Um, and I always wanted, I always wanted to paint. I mean, I had a lot of friends um, throughout the years that they could draw and they could paint and, you know, do all these like cool things like prophetic art and, stuff like that and I always just wanted to do it and I honestly because I held that belief that I couldn't even draw a stick figure or a smiley face like my smiley faces were all wonky that I actually you know manifested that like I created that and I proved myself right for many 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 years and then um I, let's see, let's keep this short. I mean, it's been a long journey. I knit, I crochet, I've had owned and operated two yarn shops and absolutely loved doing that and um, met some of the most amazing people in that journey. And, but I still just always wanted to paint, right? Like it's not, I could sit down and I could knit something while I'm doing something else. But painting kind of gets you out of life, so to speak. And so it's a whole different thing. And then just something about getting your fingers in the paint and, you know, brushes and colors and all of that was just so enticing. And then, you know, looking at the finish, I love to go to an art gallery and just look and imagine like what they must have been thinking and the journey that they were on. So it's just something that I've always wanted to do. But... Um, for various reasons, some childhood trauma, and I had this like, uh, just a crotchety art teacher, and some of you may have had that same art teacher, if you're a personal friend and you're watching this, you know who I'm talking about, um, but, so it was about, you know, it was a little over, gosh, it's been well over, a year and a half ago, I um, had been a natural health practitioner um, and wellness coach for a long time, long, 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 long time, right? And so we focused mostly on, you know, physical health and things like that. You also know that um, I started getting migraines when I was in grade school. And actually, I don't remember when they started. I just remember that it was then because I would carry around um those children's aspirin little pink ones in my pocket to school just in case i started getting a headache and i would you know take those i'm sure i took way too many of those um but and then you know they have changed throughout the years and there have been times where um you know focusing on the physical aspect and, you know, being physically healthy and eating right and supplementation and, and those things that, um, I had long periods of time where I didn't have migraines and actually, you know, was able to somewhat heal myself of some other health issues that had come along too. Um, and then, you know, the world went a little crazy for all of us. And being a natural health practitioner, you know, it was even crazier because nobody really knew what was going on and do we want to even do this? And so kind of 
the, everything stopped and became very chaotic and uncertain and stressful. And um, a lot of things changed for a lot of people, including myself. And I really had to take a look at, you know, what I wanted to continue to do. And I've always wanted to help people. I've always enjoyed that. But I knew that I, you know, it was time for me to go on to something else. And I also um, was living with somebody who was very emotionally unstable. And so my home life was just as unstable, if not more unstable, as um, a lot of what was going on in the world. And so I felt like, you know, I was living just in this um, uncertain sort of pressure cooker atmosphere, so to speak. And I was looking for an escape. And I was not going to do that in the way that um, a lot of my um, family members uh, through, you know, uh, the example that was set for me was, you know, basically prescription drugs and alcohol. And I did not, I've never wanted to have that as an example that I would set for um, myself, but for my kids. And so that wasn't really an option, even though that seemed like it could be a really great idea, right? Like, why not? And just write it out. But um, that wasn't an option for me. And so I needed, I needed something to do. Like I needed a way to escape everything that was going on and I was having more frequent migraines and they were lasting for longer and when I talk about migraines I'm not just talking about like yeah I have a migraine I can go to work um, these are like three day in bed I'll talk to you you know probably on the fourth or fifth day when you know I've worked through all of the after effects of it too and caught up a little bit in life and so it was just like this never-ending cycle and, um, you know, I had always wanted to paint and I was looking at these amazing like dot mandalas, you know, you just make little dots and you can create, if you watch some of my other videos, actually a few days ago, I showed you some of those. There's actually a couple on the wall there that you can see. Um, and I thought, you know what, I can make a dot. So I started doing that. And then I also, um, was on a call, um, for my functional, my natural health practice. And it was, um, you know, we had continuing education always, which is super important. I think for anybody that's in, you know, coaching or wellness, um, it's really important to continue to learn. And so I was on the space and a lady by the name of Deborah Lindsay um, was there talking about EFT tapping. And I just knew, I knew right then and there that I needed to um take her course and so i did i had no idea what i was getting myself into because it was like a deep dive supercharged like we're just gonna heal we're gonna heal that trauma we're gonna heal those emotions and and it was crazy like you know it was a huge commitment and probably one of the best things i can say that um that i have done and probably one of the fastest ways that I have gotten so much healing. You know, I had thought um, in the past, um, you know, that there were some levels of healing and there were, but um, you know, your body keeps the score. So you can talk about all those things, you know, your traumas and you know, all that stuff. But unless you've actually cleared that out of your body, then you know, you can talk yourself into thinking that you're healed on many levels when your body's actually storing that up. And so you've got to get that out. But that's a different, that's a different video. And here I am. We're already like 10 minutes. I wanted to keep this really short. So I was going through that. And one of the things that we needed to do was make a list of from, you know, childhood up until that day and continuing to add to it like, every undesirable experience, you know, um, whether it was a comment that a kid in a class made or, you know, stuff our parents, you know, getting in trouble for something, 
um, you know, every, everything, everything that came to the surface, we needed to make this list. And then we were, we worked on that. Right. And so, um, I had been working, you know, on some things and some childhood memories that were coming up and, you know, just working through it, doing my homework. And then, um, there's also something in EFT called borrowing benefits, where when you're working with a client, um, and helping them to clear out, you know, this energy and, you know, all of the trauma and things from their body and, you know, restoring healthy emotions and things that you are actually doing the same for you because, you know, we tap, we work along with that. And so um, not only was I working on my own stuff, but, you know, then I started working with clients and of course I'm like a deep end person you know, end up with these clients who I absolutely loved and still love each and every one of them. They taught me so many things. And um, there are some pretty heavy issues, some really, really heavy, heavy stuff. And so on top of the craziness in the world and my home life, and I am um, going through this like healing process. And then I'm working with clients that have like some pretty heavy stuff of their own that we're working through. And uh, so I just, again, coming back to, I just, I just needed to get out. I needed an escape of something like, you know, that working with my clients was very rewarding and I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't trade that for anything. I wouldn't trade like also um, the experience that I went through personally as well, because I learned a lot of things. Um, from that and I'm grateful for that but I just needed I needed some help I needed something and um, so I was helping a, a friend with her homework for a certification practice for um, a trauma certification that she was working on and part of it the exercise was an art therapy type thing and I needed to uh, draw a couple things and I remember telling her I will never forget this like okay Karina you want me to do this and I will but let me tell you I can't even draw a stick figure like my lines the art like nothing I go it's not gonna look like anything and she's like Heather that you know she just laughed and she says it doesn't really matter then she tells me not only do I have to to draw things with my right hand but I also had to do it with my left hand and I was like, okay, I'm just, you know, going to go there. Failure. It's going to be a huge failure. That's what I was thinking. And I was laughing. And then we went through the exercise and I looked and I had actually drawn, like, it looked great. And I was so taken back by that. And I thought, where did that come from? Like, where did that come from? And so then I... I mean, I kept, I still have that. I should actually pull that out and show you that um, in another video. But I, I just went back to my dot arting and I realized that in that space, I was escaping. I was um, meditating and that was something else I had tried many years ago and thought that I was a huge meditation failure because... You know, I was creating shopping lists and, um, you know, going through all of my to-do lists and, you know, I want to do this new workout and I had, you know, my kids were young at that time and, you know, it just didn't seem to work. The whole thought of clearing my head, uh, wow, okay, I've got 50 thoughts going at one time. How is this even possible? And so um, I also knew that with the migraines, um, like I was having them a lot, a lot more frequently and working the world still crazy. My home life was really crazy and I needed to relieve some stress and start taking better care of myself. And so when I was doing this dot art, um, I realized that I was clearing my mind. Like I had, my body was relaxed. I was having peace. And so I was really meditating in that space. And so I started, you know, looking to see if there was like a correlation there, if I could find some, cause I'm a huge like nerd. Um, I love like studies, you know, uh, natural health studies and, um, st you know, statistics and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
and all it's like you know kind of logical left brain stuff and so i started doing some research on you know art therapy and also like art and meditation and i came across a course um from whitney freya who i am super grateful for too and it was doing a um a mandala and it was actually and there was meditation involved but that wasn't the course that i actually ended up signing up for the one that I did was um, it was a mandala painting I don't remember the name of it and um, Whitney if you happen to watch this you can comment that below because it was great and that is my this painted mandala let's see I gotta go I'm backwards so right there that one and um, I had to actually draw that I couldn't dot and um, I did it and it took me about a week because I was, you know, just going through different layers and things and that sort of started it. And then I, um, I of course started, you know, absorbing all of her information and stuff. And then, um, this certification came up and I actually realized that, um, I could, I could paint. And thinking and meditating on all of that, what I realized was that when I was clearing out some of these childhood memories through EFT, that I was clearing out um, those limiting beliefs that I couldn't paint, that I couldn't be an artist, that I couldn't be creative. Um, and I didn't even know that was never something that I had planned on working through. It wasn't like, I want to be an artist. So I'm going to use EFT. I'm going to get to the bottom of what's blocking me. I, that was not anything close, not anything close. I'll tell you one of the childhood stories. Um, I used to read 17 magazine. I was in sixth grade. And the cover of Seventeen magazine, the girl had used food coloring and dyed her hair. Okay, so I had asked, got permission, grabbed the food coloring packet, and um, I went and dyed all of my hair in a rainbow. Rainbow colors. I thought I did a great job. My dad did not like that. And then I, it was food coloring and it didn't really wash out too soon. So I got grounded. Simple. It wasn't this like, you know, ultra uh, traumatic thing that happened. Um, I, but my body stored it as something like when you're creative, it's not safe. It can, creativity can get you in trouble. And so we're going to stay away from that, right? That's your subconscious, your left brain, just trying to keep you safe. And so then I had an art teacher who, you know, the horizon, I couldn't even get that right. Heather, you can't even get a horizon right. You know, how are you going to pass this class? So again, my subconscious went through and said, do you remember that time that you got in trouble for using food coloring in your hair? Guess what? This is the same thing. Stop trying to even draw, stop trying to be, you know, creative in this way because it gets you into trouble, right? And so that's just, that's just how our brains function. So anyway, um, I started painting and I've been painting ever since and many, 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 many things in other areas of my life because of my personal painting practice have shifted, like my business is completely shifting. Um, I'm not in that living situation any longer, thankfully. Um, so many things have changed for me and I actually feel so much like myself and just getting back to the basics and things are new and um, yeah, so that's a little bit of, I had so much peace in, you know, when I paint and then, uh, I'll touch a little bit more on, um, 
I'm not going to go into a lot of detail with this one, but when I left that situation, it was a, basically it was a pack and move in one day kind of a thing. And, um, very, very, very stressful. And a lot of, you know, that whole situation, um, was very stressful and a lot of unknowns and things uh, happening along that. And I also knew Whitney was starting this um, Creatively Fit coaching certification. I knew my gut was telling me that I needed to do this for myself and that um, my self-care and caring for me and putting me first for a while was what was best for me and um, so I just I took a dive and you know it's been it's been a journey and I will tell you like in the midst of an absolute crazy chaotic storm um, and things that would normally have me stressed out and really nervous I have had a level of peace that I have never ever ever experienced in my life and all i need to do is just go to the canvas and that's been like i think the biggest thing for me it's that meditation um migraines like i and nothing compared to what they were um i mean that's just something that i mean it, it's been my life and and that's okay but I will say that if I can paint, so can you. And it's not about producing anything that, um, like a finished product for somebody else, um, although that is in the works for me. Um, it's about painting for me. And when I'm there and that starts to set in, you know, that like inner critic, um, or that left brain, like you're, you know, not producing or you have to produce or what if this was a, you know, you need to have this beautiful finished thing. And when I'm there, it's like, you know what, I can paint whatever the heck I want to. And it's so empowering and there's so much peace and yeah. So, so much for a short video. We're at like almost 25 minutes. I love you. Thank you so much. Um, if you are still here in this video, I really appreciate you and um, I will see you. I think I'm going to be out and about tomorrow, so it'll be very short. Um, but I am, you know, have a lot more days ahead. And I started a new painting last night, so you'll see some glimpses of that. All right, guys, have a great weekend. I love you and I'll talk to you soon.